On the eve of the Festival of Freedom, Passover, President Ben Svee welcomes in his Jerusalem home a delegation of Egyptian refugee immigrants expelled by Nasser because they are Jews. For them, this year's Festival of Passover took on a special meaning. The refugees are coming in at such a rate that some are given temporary shelter in the Ma'barot, the transit camps. But gradually they move into permanent houses which the government and the Jewish agency are building as fast as possible to keep pace with the mounting flow of immigrants. Here, this newly arrived Egyptian Jewish family prepares for the Passover festival with a special ritual of cleansing. And on the first night in every Jewish home, there is a special service called Seder in which families relive the ancient exodus of the Jews from Egypt and their harsh taskmasters. The head of the household holds up this bread of affliction eaten by the ancient Israelites. Then, by tradition, the youngest child asks, why is this night different from all other nights? And is told of Jury's bitter history of persecution and liberation. This particular family, expelled a few months ago, did not need to use imagination to recapture the experiences of their ancestors thousands of years ago. The first tree of the New Jerusalem forest to cover the hillsides near the capital was planted this month by President Ben Svee close to Mount Herzl. The forest will comprise one million trees and is intended to beautify the surroundings of Jerusalem, combat soil erosion and offer shade from the hot summer sun. Also this month, in the nearby Judean hills, the first saplings were planted in memory of the national hero of Chile, General Bernard O'Higgins in the presence of diplomats and representatives of the Foreign Ministry, Jewish Agency and Jewish National Fund. <laughs> to the new campus of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, still in the process of building, came distinguished visitors, like archaeologist and soldier Dr. Yigal Yadin and French ambassador Monsieur Pierre Gilbert, headed by President Ben Svi to see eight outstanding men of letters, science and public affairs receive honorary doctorates of the Hebrew University. Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion is the most popular of the new doctors of philosophy, honored by the university in the presence of a distinguished audience. The Soviet ambassador to Israel, Mr. Alexander Abramov, arrived at Libya Airport after an absence of five months he had been recalled to Moscow following the Sinai campaign. Also at Lida was American Ambassador Mr. Lawson to receive families of officials returning after the lifting of the American travel ban. The Hungarian flag was hoisted above the residence of the President in Jerusalem when the new Hungarian Minister to Israel arrived to present his credentials to the head of the state. The ceremony took place in the presence of senior officials of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs. Mr. Ollenhauer, leader of the West German Socialist Party, who had a brilliant anti-Nazi record during the Hitler period, visited Israel this month. Highlight of his trip was a visit to the Yuval Gard pipe factory near the Gaza Strip, producing giant irrigation pipes to bring water from the north to the arid south. His last glimpse of the plant was through this 66-inch irrigation pipe. Also visiting Israel this month and taking a look at the new Lachish development area are the two daughters of the French Prime Minister Guy Mollet. Youth calls to youth when they drive through the area with a group of young Israel pioneer settlers. On a visit to Kibbutz Negba, they see the monument uh, erected to the memory of those who fell in defense of the settlement against Egyptian attack in 1948. Miss Selina Sokolov, daughter of Nahum Sokolov, the great Zionist leader and man of letters, inaugurated the Israel Journalists Association New Press Club in Tel Aviv this month. The main address was given by Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion. The club is called Sokolov House. For the first time in their history, the International Council of Jewish Women held their World Conference in Jerusalem. A distinguished audience, including the 80 delegates from 15 countries, heard an address by the only woman foreign minister in the world, Mrs. Golda Meir of Israel. 
she spoke of the outstanding part played by women in building this country. Following the conference, the leader of the Australian delegation opened a new housing estate in an immigrant village in honour of the president of the Association of Jewish Women in Australia. The mayor of Wishon at Sion is a woman, Mrs. Hannah Levine, and she is particularly proud of the convalescent home for nursing mothers which has been opened in her district. Five days after birth, the mothers leave hospital and convalesce at this garden home where their babies receive full medical care and where they receive guidance in motherhood. During rest periods, while the babies are asleep in their cots, the new mothers relax in the sunshine. Here, near the beach of Eilat, while on a tour of the Negev, are Jewish youth leaders from overseas. They are attached to the Jewish Agency's Youth Leadership Institute, which this year celebrates its 10th anniversary. They spend one year in Israel, studying the life here and touring the country, and then return to impart what they have learned and seen to their youth movements. Many come back to establish new pioneer settlements in Israel. In the last 10 years, 1,343 young men and women from 37 countries, including Britain, the United States, Canada, South Africa, Australia, Holland and South America, have come to Israel under this scheme, and many have returned to found new settlements. In the Negev, they visit the desert settlement of Be'er Ora, where youngsters like themselves are making the wilderness blossom. Moving northwards, they reach the phosphate works, which now produce one of Israel's major exports, and then cap their trip with a visit to Stom on the Dead Sea and to the ancient fortress of Masada. It's tough going, but the glorious view from the height is worth the climb. This was the last Jewish stronghold to hold out against the Romans nearly 2,000 years ago. Its 900 defenders wrote an epic chapter in the story of Jewish resistance. After seven months of siege, just as the enemy was about to enter their citadel, rather than be captured by the Romans, they fell on their own swords. Just north of Masada is the ancient biblical holiday resort of Ein Gedi, Hebrew for the Fountain of the Kid, and the icy pool fed by natural springs offers a refreshing end to a lively, entertaining and instructive trip. Israel's two tyre plants, the Alliance and the General Tyre Company, established only a few years ago, now supply the whole of the country's considerable needs and earn valuable foreign exchange by exporting their Made in Israel tyres to overseas markets. Modern machines homogenize, press and shape the rubber, which is then applied to forms and baked in high temperature ovens. The factories turn out tyres of all sizes to fit all vehicles. Export tyres are taken straight from factory to the port of Haifa on the Mediterranean and handled mechanically from quayside to ship's hold. In the northern Galilee village of Jish, the ancient Gush Halab, near the Lebanese frontier, the Maronite Christian community of Israel gathered this month to inaugurate a new school and monastery. Two Maronite archbishops from the Lebanon were among the distinguished guests who also included representatives of the government and of the Christian communities in Israel. Also in Galilee this month, the Druze community in Israel made their annual pilgrimage to the village of Hittin, near the biblical horns of Hittin, to pay homage to the memory of Jethro, father-in-law of Moses, who they believe is buried there. Jethro is revered by the Druze as a great prophet. One of his names was also Shuib, and the festival is known as the Feast of Nebi Shuib.
In the garden city of Ramat Gan, adjoining Tel Aviv, French ambassador Pierre Gilbert delights the audience with an address in polished Hebrew at a ceremony naming a new street in honor of the French nation. This is Ramat Gan's tribute to France. Standing high in the autographed stock exchange of young Israelis is the signature of the popular French ambassador to Israel. At the French Cultural Centre in Tel Aviv, sponsored by the French cultural attaché Mademoiselle Fischer, French artist Valentin Derrier holds a one-man show of oils, watercolours and black and white drawings of Israel types. Most popular were his old Sephardi Jew, the youthful first secret, and his Bedouin shepherd girl. Six thousand soldiers and civilians took part in a march to Jerusalem this month, reviving the ancient traditional pilgrimage of the ascent to the capital before Passover. Male soldiers marched 40 kilometers a day in full pack and rifle for four consecutive days, and they underwent toughening up training before the event. From all over the country they came, and rendezvoused on the last night in the Judean hills. As they swung their way past new immigrant settlements, children came out to greet them with sweets and spring flowers. The 40 kilometers each day had to be completed in seven hours with two rest periods of 20 minutes. Here they were given oranges and milk by the delighted villagers. Youth cadets called Gadna and civilians marched for two days. This cadet unit had a monkey as their mascot. But the girl soldiers stole the show, bright and smart with a spring to their march. Many kibbutzim sent youth contingents. The bus driver's cooperative also sent a contingent and they were followed by overseas students who are here on a year's visit. The old folk participants got a special hand. One marcher was over 70. Two cups were given to the winning boys and girls team, gaining most points for style, grace, spirit and zest. <laughs> 